Excavators is here. Welcome back, Autobots, Decepticons, and everything in between to another Transformers theory. Today's is going to cover Trench's origins in Transformers The Last Night, along with explaining what happened to him after the Decepticons raided the junkyard. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Now, Trench was a blink or you miss it character in Transformers The Last Night who was created to celebrate the relationship between Transformers and Caterpillar construction, since a lot of their cat machines were featured as the Constructicons in Revenge of the Fallen. His sole purpose in the film was to promote the Cat 320 Excavator, which explains why out of his 25 seconds of screen time, 22 seconds were dedicated to his vehicle mode. In the movie itself, however, Trench was an Autobot refugee who was taken in by Cade Yeager in order to protect him from the Transformers reaction Force, a government organization that incarcerated all Transformers on Earth despite their allegiance. When the TRF gave Megatron and his crew the junkyard's location, Trench and Hound were prepared to give their lives to buy time for Kate and the other Autobots to escape. And this is where Trench's story ends, since after this shot, Trench was never seen or mentioned of again, leading fans to question what happened to him after this scene. So today, I intend to finally give some closure on Trench's fate after all of these years, along with trying to figure out what his origin is, since despite him being a character created specifically for The Last Night, there is a lot of evidence at hand to prove that Trench is actually another character from an earlier movie. But before I jump into that rabbit hole, a quick word from our sponsor, Keeps. Did you know that two out of three guys will eventually experience hair loss by the time they're 35? That's why Keeps comes to the rescue. Keeps offers clinically proven research-backed treatments to stop hair loss and improve hair growth. And you don't even need to drive all the way to a doctor's office to be prescribed a treatment. Since with their 24-7 customer support, you can get in contact with a number of expert medical advisors, prescribers, and care specialists to help stop hair loss in its tracks. Every treatment plan comes with a full year of unlimited messaging, meaning you can get in contact with your prescribing doctor about anything you want to ask, anytime. All treatment plans offered by Keeps are delivered straight to your door. And the best part is that they are very affordable, being around half the cost of a traditional pharmacy. So whether you're looking to prevent hair loss, stimulate hair growth, or just want to take better care of your hair, Keeps has you covered. Hair loss stops with Keeps. To get 50% off your first order, go to keeps.com slash trans theories or click the link in the description. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash trans theories. Now to start off with the easier question of what happened to Trench. As we know, him and Hound were up against Megatron and his crew of five Decepticons. So the odds were already not in their favor. To counteract this, we know that they would surprise attack the Decepticons. This can be proven since in this scene where Hound attacks Megatron, we can see that Hound hid behind this Ford of cars, that he strategically placed to conceal himself before he pushed them out of the way to fight Megs. So knowing that Hound chose that strategy to fight off the cons, I think it would be safe to say that Trench would have done something similar in order to buy the Autobots some time. But unlike Hound, Trench doesn't have any weapons that we know of besides his claw, so he would be a very easy target to take out, rendering his chance of survival to be very low. Now, you could say that Trench did end up surviving since despite Hound being at Megatron's mercy after one-shotting him, Megatron decided not to finish the job. However, you have to take into consideration that Megatron just let out four bloodthirsty convicts, ready to kill straight out of the TRF Supermax. The reason why Megatron decided to spare Hound is because Megatron doesn't find pleasure in killing his enemies. He finds pleasure making them watch him succeed while they are helpless to do anything. At least, this is how he is portrayed in The Last Night. A perfect example of this is when he had the opportunity to kill Optimus Prime, his sworn enemy that he has been defeated by time and time again. And despite having Prime at his mercy, he decides to let him live, telling Prime that he will suffer by watching the Earth die. But unlike Megatron, Onslaught, Mohawk, Dreadbot, and Nitro Zeus were not portrayed as the type to spare their enemies, and instead were portrayed to be unhinged and eager to kill whenever given the opportunity. And considering that Trench would have to go up against these guys, in addition to fighting off Barricade as well, I think it is safe to say that he was killed off-screen by Megatron's forces. 
So now knowing how Trench likely died, I want to shift gears and speculate on his potential origin. Since I found some considerable evidence at hand that can point to Trench actually being the Constructicon scrapper from Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. Besides them looking nearly identical, the smoking gun here is that scrapper never died, opening up the possibility for him to eventually switch sides and become Trench. Now, you could say that this claim is bogus since we saw him get blown up in the airstrike. But that scrapper was actually a clone of him. You see, Revenge of the Fallen did something really weird where there were two sets of Constructicons, the real ones who combined to form Devastator, and then there were three Constructicon drones that were an exact copy of Long Haul, Scrapper, and Mixmaster, whose only purpose in the film was to fill out the Decepticon army and to eventually be killed off. The real Scrapper that combined to form Devastator actually never died. I can prove this since if we take a look at Devastator's death, when the railgun shoots Devi, Scavenger who forms the body of Devastator takes the majority of the damage, since Devi gets shot right in the shoulder which is where Scrapper combines onto. However, in this scene, there is a movie mistake. Since when Devastator gets shot, we can see the piece where Scrapper connects to gets sheared off, but in the next shot, it's reattached. Either way, Scrapper survived the blast since the bulk of the damage was tanked by Scavenger. The only other damage he would take would be hitting the ground. And since there have been many cases of Transformers falling from great heights and surviving, I think it would be safe to say that Scrapper would survive. This is why we see him once again in Transformers Dark of the Moon. During Optimus's rage, Scrapper is briefly seen getting shanked through the gut and slashed at the back of the spine, which also causes his right arm to be severed. Now due to the injuries he sustained and observing the way he falls on the ground, we can assume that he was split in half. Now you could say at this point this theory is debunked since nobody can survive that. But Transformers can survive for a short time after being split in half. Take the Mixmaster clone, for example. After he was cut in half by Jetfire, he was still moving all fine and well all the way up to his death. Another example of this would be Jazz. Now, contrary to popular belief, Jazz didn't die when he was split in half. He actually died several minutes later due to energon loss. This can be proven since when Ironhide carries Jazz's body, Jazz's gun is retracted, while when he was split in half, his gun was still out. This proves that for some time after the split, Jazz was alive, since he would need time to retract his gun. And to further back this up, Ironhide tells Prime that he and Ratchet couldn't save Jazz. Prime, we couldn't save him. Now you could bring up the point that Scrapper would eventually bleed out. But there is one factor I haven't mentioned yet, and that is cauterization, which if you don't already know is a medical practice or technique of burning part of the body to close off a wound, with it being commonly used to burn and seal blood vessels. This helps reduce or stop bleeding during surgery or after an injury. Now, we know that Scrapper's wounds were cauterized since when Optimus shanked him. If you look closely, the Energon gets vaporized due to how hot Prime's blades are. So with that evidence at hand, this proves that Scrapper didn't bleed out leading him to cheat death once again. Now, the next question you may have is how he would get out of harm's way. And, well, we know that the Autobots are usually not the ones to finish off the wounded. Well, unless you're Optimus Prime. So his main concern would be to get out of the city. Now, Transformers can't regrow limbs. So Scrapper would have to find a new pair of legs along with a new right arm. And since there were a lot of dead protoform carcasses around, he would easily be able to find some replacement limbs. But now you may be saying trance. How could Scrapper just slap on a new pair of legs and walk away? Well, Transformers can replace damaged limbs with limbs from other Transformers. In The Last Night, Squeaks gets his arm shot off by a TRF Sentry, but it later gets replaced by a Decepticon arm thanks to the help of Izzy. And this arm is from a completely different body, but yet it's still compatible for Squeaks to use. This theory of Scrapper taking the legs from another body further backs him up being Trench. Since Scrapper's cannon height is 29 feet tall, while Trench is 19 feet tall, the only way to prove that these two were one and the same is if Scrapper magically shrunk down. And with all the evidence at hand, we can actually prove that he did by taking the legs from a fallen Decepticon to survive. As for how he got out of Chicago, he would scan a new vehicle mode. And since his body was now smaller due to the new legs, when he scanned his new vehicle, it would reconfigure his body to make him proportionate again. So when he would transform back into robot mode, he would be a smaller version of himself. 
But now, the last question we need to answer is why Scrapper would join the Autobots. And, well, after Dark of the Moon, the Decepticons were in shambles, with their leader gone, and big players such as Starscream, Shockwave, and Soundwave out of the picture, there was no hope for the Decepticon faction to make a comeback. This would cause many Decepticons to go into hiding and most to be killed off by Cemetery Wind. During this time in hiding, Scrapper scanned his new Cat 320 vehicle mode as a disguise. And this works in-universe since the events of Age of Extinction take place during the year 2018. And since the Cat 320 came out during 2017, it's safe to say that during the events between Dark of the Moon and Age of Extinction, Scrapper was able to acquire this alternate mode. Later on, sometime before the events of The Last Night, I believe Scrapper was fortunate enough to be discovered by Cade Yeager on one of his Transformer hunts. Wanting to ensure his survival, Scrapper would agree to be taken in by Cade Yeager. As a sign of appreciation, Scrapper would switch his name to Trench to leave his Decepticon heritage behind and to become an official member of the Autobot team. Now, the last thing I would like to touch a base upon is why Scrapper was able to change his eye color from red to blue. And, well, it appears that changing eye color is a thing Transformers can naturally do. For example, after snapping out of his mind control, Optimus was able to change his eye color back to blue. And Barricade was able to make two of his eyes blue despite them previously being red. But I plan to do a dedicated video on this topic soon, so stay tuned. And just like that, that was The Origins of Trench. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you have not already, check out the Fixing Transformers playlist for some more awesome theories. But before I go, I want to say thank you to all my Patreons and channel members for supporting the channel. Thanks to you guys, Trans Theories is where it is today, so thank you. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, consider dropping a like rating because it does help the channel a lot. With that said, keep on theorizing. Thank you.